You know, I uh, I grew up with David Duchovny, and uh, a good story about him and I was that he was two years older than I, and he was really cool when we were little. <laughs> and then he, and he, made, he continued to be really cool, but he, uh, he, uh, his, his high school team beat my high school team by 50 points at Collegiate. And I remember crying to my father afterwards. But you don't understand that, if he was by 50. <laughs> and he's a very good basketball player. And then, so he goes to Princeton and, and you know, all these girls are falling in love with him. And I thought that I would like to go to Princeton and have girls fall in love with me. <laughs> and, um, so, but I, kept face and I played college basketball and I went to an Ivy League school and I'm like, okay, pretty cool. And then so uh, I see David in a club, I think it was actually Studio 54 or something like that, after after college and he's writing and taking doing an English master's uh, at Stanford or something or he's getting his PhD in writing. And he asked me what I'm doing, and I said, I'm acting. And he goes, wow, I really would like to be an actor. <laughs> and I thought, finally, and I was like, I got David. I got David doing something that I want to do. And then lo and behold, boom, 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 boom. And um, the, the role that they, they wrote Donnie Faster, because after the first season, um, David was complaining about having to work every hour of every day, and uh, or he just is like, I need a break. And so when I got up there, he's like, I can't believe you got this job, because this is one I was like, give somebody up, uh, get up someone, uh, you know, to work a little bit more and give Jill and I uh, a day off. I'm a painter, so um, uh, all colors are my favorite colors, but uh, I'm a big fan of. Cerulean blue. It's been 25 years now. Um, I think when it first came out, since it was the first season, it was really big. Um, you know, going to school and or returning to school after it came out was a little bit of a challenge for us. Um, but I think, you know, it became more and more popular, but again, the time began to since we had done the episode, so it faded over time. Yes, being a young kid doing the acting thing, it was super exciting. Um, being on set and having a trailer and working with uh, celebrities, David and Jill. Are you guys like still surprised by that at least? And like how how much of a legacy the show has? Yeah, I mean, I think it's awesome. I think to be a part of, if anything, it's it's being a part of something that's become so popular and so successful and has such a big following. I mean, not a lot of people have that, so it's quite a number. And also I remember in one of the scenes in the car when we're driving, um, it was in a studio, and I think it was really late at night. I can't remember what time it was, but David and Jillian were in the car with us and we were kind of just joking around in between takes. And I remember he like turned around and he was surprised at his noise. They were so nice to us and just made sure, you know, we were younger, this was new to us. Um, you know, they they kept us smiling the whole time. One of one of the cool memories that I have is when we were filming the truck stop. Um, yeah, that scene. We actually had like photos of us filming the truck stop and then we filmed the truck stop and then we filmed the truck stop. I wasn't expecting that we would do something to play us and I thought that was pretty cool, you know. <laughs> and also hiding in a boat. Under a tarp, I, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the good memories, having a trailer and just working with David and Jillian was really cool. We just did. I was hired as a one offer. We were doing the, the, the first, the two parter episode, and the Bounty Hunter was. And I was up for three feature films at the same time that I got the part of the down there. And my hair had to be, it couldn't be made into a true cut. So I said, okay, we can cut the hair short, but we gotta leave it long, so it still kind of at least looks like a, a, a businessman's haircut. You know, we can't go to a true cut. 
And also, I, when I've been given the part, I've been told that the second script, the second episode, hadn't been written yet, so they, didn't, they weren't, I wasn't allowed to read it because it hadn't been written. Well, that makes sense. So, I go to the, the uh, set, and they cut my hair, they take a picture, they send it to Chris Carter back in LA, and they say it's not short enough. Well, I said, yes, it is short enough. They said, no, it's not. I said, okay, well, you can go a little shorter on the signs, but that's at least a bit shorter on top. And, 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 the, and the bummer here, the thing that really sucks, is I, the crew cut's my favorite haircut. I love that many crew cut. You just go foo foo foo, and you walk out of the bedroom, you're ready to face the day. There's no hair to mess with. Well, the, uh, the hairdresser, you know, paying attention to his boss, after like the, the second time it came back, they took pictures a second time and said, no, it's still not short enough. The hairdresser grabs my hair like this. And he just took, he just took the scissors and just went, Wow! Just like this, cut it like that. I'm like, I, I grabbed his hand <laughs> with the scissors in it, and I said, "Look, if, if I stuck these scissors in your shoulder right now, your arm would heal faster than my hair would grow back. You did not have permission to cut my hair that short. I wanted to fuck." So, so I was worried because they were major feature films that I was up for at the time, and I was irritated. Well, the next day, I I got to the set, and I don't remember what happened, but some little ding went off in my head. Somebody mentioned something about the second episode, and I was talking to the second assistant director, and I said, oh, I haven't, uh, you know, I don't have my script with me, could I see yours? Now, mind you, they told me it hadn't been written yet, which was really fishy because they got to start shooting it in like eight days. They have a script and they got to be on location. Oh, sure. So the guy gives me his script, not knowing that, that they didn't want me to be reading the script for the second episode because they had told me that the character would be more developed and flushed out. So I read this and it, it had, also they told me that it hadn't been written. So I read the second script and the alien bounty hunter just walks around killing people, stabbing them in the neck, and doesn't have a single fucking line. <laughs> so Bob Goodwin gets to the set that day, and uh, I said, I need to speak with the producer. So Bob shows up, and Bob had been a nice producer who had been, you know, in the middle between Chris Carter saying, cut it shorter, and me saying, no, leave it long which is an odd place to be in. And uh, ultimately, a, a, a silly vanity thing that I didn't give a crap about how long my hair was, except for my agent saying, we can't cut your hair that short. My agent, do I have a long-term relationship with you? We, you've got to leave your hair long, which they've been told. So back to Bob Goodwin. Bob, I've been told that the second script hasn't written yet. I've been told that this character is, um, more developed. I said, you know, I've been lied to. The script has been written for a long time. The AD told me he had the script a week ago. So I think it would just be best if we cut our cut our losses. You don't have to pay me. I'm not a prop for someone's violence. I want a real part that I can put some acting intentions into. Just uh, why don't you not shoot me, replace me? I want to go home. I don't like being lied to. It doesn't feel good at all. But he's like, oh, Brian, I, I don't know anything about this. Let me see what the casting director said. In one hour, the scene with David Duchovny and me on the submarine that wasn't even in the first episode, it wasn't even in the, the script that I read, appeared over the fax machine. It's back in faxes. Anybody remember the fax machine? <laughs> with the scene with David Duchovny, which is a great scene, which married the bounty hunter to the mythology of, of uh, what happened to David's sister. Now, 
Would this scene have been written without the hissy fit that I threw over the haircut and not having the, the script? We don't know. But I'll tell you, until that morning, that scene hadn't been written. And, you know, out of, out of certain struggles, I got in the X-Files for eight seasons. Well, who, and who ever even knew what the alien Donner honey looks like on his alien planet? Because he was a mighty mortal alien Donner honey. <laughs> what, what his original form was, we don't really know. You know it could be a, probably is a green, amoebic like blob with no defined borders. And I can't do that. I can't be an amoebic blob with no defined borders. So the simple answer is he was motivated very much by the human. I mean, it, there's humans who stab people in the neck. Humans can say, everything dies, which is a little haunting from Sam. And, and humans can say to David, she's alive. Can you die now? And these are, these are very human, human-like emotions. And do you have a souvenir Sharpie thing at home that you have to keep from the set? Like your little blade thing that you, you really? Did you get to keep one as a souvenir? That's my question. No, and I was there was three of them that were made, and the prop department promised me that I would get the one that didn't function and just stayed out. Yeah. And I called them after the show was over. Oh yeah, I took the shop. Never got it. Oh. Um, yeah, if I want one, I'm gonna make it myself. <laughs> I got to spend the whole night in a car with Jillian Anderson. And it was warm and and inviting and, and social. It was social. There was nothing torrid or period that happened. It was uh, just a beautiful evening in a car where everybody was just freezing their ass off outside. We were in that nice cozy car being social. And then, you know, the, the submarine set was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That thing, when I walked on the set, the whole crap, they built the entire half of a submarine on this film set. How much money did I spend on the show? This was his guy before, but, and he got him killed. You remember that, that, those lines? I kind of remember those lines. And I said to Mulder, but you're not going to get me killed. How wrong was I? <laughs> but the difference was, was, I think, X was a little bit more violent. <laughs> violent and vicious. Yeah. He was a killer and he was trying to be more of a survivor. When the role was originally offered to you, were you expecting it to be a much smaller role than it ended up becoming? Um, I expected it to be a week's work. But it worked out to be quite good for me because I was working a good deal in those days. And uh, so I could fly into Vancouver and uh, do my two-day dance with David. And uh, then I would go away somewhere else and a uh, week or so I'd come back and do two more days. And uh, I never actually met Jillian until uh, my death scene. <laughs> when I arrived on the set for that last week, When I arrived on the set for the last week, wow. Wow. That's <clears throat> and, um, Carter said, don't worry, don't worry, nobody ever really dies. <laughs> um, but uh, he did. <laughs> so Chris calls me up one day and he says, Stephen, good news and bad news. They go, what? The good news is we want to bring you up next week for another episode. I go, great. Because the bad news is you got to take a bullet. <laughs> that was, that's my story of how I learned that I was going to go. And I went up that next week and did the episode and of course took a bullet. Now later on, <laughs> there was some political shit that happened that I don't know about, that I've heard about. But later on, Chris's assistant calls me up a couple weeks later after I died. And he offered me his season Dodgers tickets right behind the, right behind the home plate. The Dodgers! Yeah, he said, Stephen, how'd you like to have these tickets for uh, you know, the rest of the season you can go to Dodger games? And I think that was his way of saying, hey, 
you know, we had to kill y'all, but here's a consolation prize. I'm still pissed at him, brother. So, did she go to the game? Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> Had a good time. No, I'm not even a baseball fan, I'm not even a sports fan, but it was such a joy to go to Dodger Stadium and, and sit behind home plate and, and watch these games, you know. It was cool. In the first season, we had no idea that the show would survive. It was rated in the papers about 80 or 85. Um, and it should have been for it to be a success. <clears throat> uh, to be a, succe a success, it should have been at least in the 20s or so about. So we were way up, and the speculation about what it would be and where it was going was right inside of the uh, group around the show. But there wasn't much being said about it outside of the show. Um, and it was extraordinary because that first season, we did 24 shows, um, which is not a usual buy for the networks. So uh, I didn't follow it. Um, it got my attention later on uh, because everywhere I went, um, I was recognized, and I have been an actor. Uh, I've now been an actor for about 65 years. And, uh, uh, that was uh, an extraordinary event. I happened to have been traveling a lot we worked in Europe and some in Asia. And people recognized me out of that show all over the place. And uh, I actually had a rather interesting, uh, I don't know, what we, I guess an encounter. Uh, I was doing a show in Edinburgh and a gentleman in Glasgow called me and said, would you come over to my sci-fi shop and sign some autographs? And I said, sure. Do it on my day off, I'll come over to it. So I drove over, and when I got there, there was a line happening around the block, but it was mostly young girls. <laughs> so I thought, wow, who the hell else is signing <laughs> I walked in the shop, and it turns out I was the guy. Yeah. The, the point of the story is that these were teeny boppers, <laughs> and they all wanted me to sign body parts. <laughs> so it was a hell of a day. <laughs>
the delivery of the baby, I'll never forget it, was cottage cheese and strawberry jelly. <laughs> That's pretty close. <laughs> but my actual question is, your first knee-jerk reaction when you saw that Reyes had turned, what was your first thought if she was such a believer? My first thought was that it had to be protected to, to be to protect Scully. That was what my first thought was. I mean, I didn't really want to go to the other side, but now I've actually had a wonderful time working with Lane. <laughs> The other side's not so bad. Really. <laughs> a lot of the episodes, and uh, I can't remember. So, um, to be quite honest, so uh, one of my favorite moments was telling cigarette smoking man to put her up and kiss yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite questions to ask is about the best director in television, Kim Manners. So I wanted to ask all of you for your favorite Kim Manners moment, because he oh, was so was important to the show. Too many. I just, you know, Kim was, Kim was a, he was talking about rock. He was, he was the rock of the show. Um, and he, uh, he brought so much, he brought so much energy and so much, he put so much of his, of his life and his heart into the into the show. So uh, it was, you know, I, I just every 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 moment that I was around Kim was was uh, he inspired me. So I, I and I loved him to death. I miss him. He was uh, he, so many television directors. Uh, I don't don't want to say don't know much about. No, I'm not, not even particularly interested in actors. They're just kind of interested. In, getting the shot that they, that they that like. Yeah. Uh, but Kim would fool you that way. Of course, he'd been an actor, so he had a sensitivity to what we were doing. And I always used to surprise me, you know, you, you would come on set and you'd have a chance to just run lines with the other actor that you're gonna do the scene with, and you'd be doing that. Then out of nowhere, all of a sudden, Kim is standing there going, watching how you're running your lines. Oh, I thought I was just putting my lines. Oh, okay. So he was engaging with your process right from there. And, and I remember how many times he would say, you know, after we'd done a, a take that we really liked, and he'd say, you know, I think you've got another one in you, and we'd get to do one more just for the heck of it, just for an actor. Um, uh, no, he was, he was a joy to work with. Yeah, <clears throat> especially for me, joining in late. Um, he was kind of my beacon, and uh, we still, to this day in my household, uh, co constantly say, when, and whenever anyone has to go up and do something amazing, we all say, kick it in the ass. <laughs> he, would, he would yell at me for everything. All right, let's kick it in the ass. <laughs> Thank you. Brother Alexander, right here. <laughs>